Orhan Tahir. He is a Romanian civil rights activist from Bulgaria, living now in between Germany and Belgium. He studied law of the Sofia University St. Clement Ochritsky in Bulgaria and later politics and history at the University of Nottingham, UK. Orhan is co-founder of the Future of European Roma Initiative and several committees for the advancement of European Romani politics. The same question to you, Orhan. The vision of Europe of the Roma. Thank you for this introduction. I was ve it was very interesting to listen to the people in the panel about the future. Uh, your question was about our vision for the future of Europe. Visions of Roma for yes. Europe. Yes. Yeah. But I think before having future a vision about Europe, we need to create vision about ourselves in Europe, about our own future in Europe. And I'm very concerned with this question over the last years, what will be our future as Roma people in Europe tomorrow? And Simonida, look at this panel. You yourself, you are from former Yugoslavia, right? From uh, which country? Serbia. Serbia. You are also from former Macedonia. We have two people from Spain, and we have two people from, from Bulgaria. What is interesting here is that all of us, we live in Western Europe. You don't have anybody in this panel who currently is living in Eastern Europe. You have people from Eastern Europe, but they are no more in Eastern Europe. About the future of Roma, the first thing that will happen in our movement, I think, due to the migration, demographic, and other processes, is the shift, the shift of the gravity, the shift of the Roma movement from East to the West, just because hundreds of thousands of Roma moved physically moved from east to the west. So Roma movement itself in the future, and this is the first thing I want to tell you, in my opinion, will be focused, will be based somewhere in the Western Europe in the next 20, 50 years, let's say. This is the first thing. The second thing, uh, the question about uh, education of children and young people you, you were speaking about uh, education, the need of education, and the barriers for the children. Vicente uh, mentioned that we have a very high percentage of young people. We are leading maybe in Europe by percentage, by share of young people among our, in our population. Now the question is for me in the future, is not the education of Roma or the children itself, because we already have too many educated people. The question in the next 20, 30, 50 years will be, where will this educated Roma people work? Where will these educated people go? This will be a, a, a huge question for the future. Because I'm, uh, even in these Eastern European countries, even in where practically in Bulgaria, in Romania, now you have schools where you have only Roma children, because there is no other children there. Towns, villages, cities where 90% of the children are, are Roma. There are no other children. And these children tomorrow will be at the labor market. Let's say many of them will get good education. Even now we have a lot of people with good education. But the question is what they are going to work. Because even now we have too many Roma with pedagogical, legal, I don't know, uh, other educations, you know, other degrees, who cannot realize themselves in the market, in the labor market, neither in Eastern Europe nor in Western Europe. We have too many people qualified, well-educated, high-educated Roma people who work Many, many work. They work uh, in factories, in farms, in restaurants. They don't work according to their profession. And we are losing them as capacities. 
They don't work according to their, they don't apply their skills. They don't use their skills, but they work together with the people who doesn't have such education. Now the big question, uh, the first thing is the shift of the population, the demographic change will, which will occur. And the second is the future of the young Roma, uh, the professional realization of the educated Roma. Because in the next 20 years, in the next 50 years, we will have huge percentage of well-educated Roma. Just because during the last 30 years, it was invested a lot in the education of Roma. Now, the next, the next very important uh, uh, question for me. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think that in 20, 30 years, the the question of integration or inclusion of Roma will completely drop out from the political agendas, from the political programs, from the governmental programs, just because you will have far-right governments almost everywhere in Europe. Now you have Meloni in Italy. It's a question of time to have Le Pen in France. And believe me, Meloni and Le Pen will be moderate, moderate in comparison to those who will come in the future, who will be much more radical in their demands regarding migrants, regarding minorities, regarding social issues, and so on. So in the future, the, the very concept of integration of Roma will completely, completely um, drop out. It will be abandoned, it will be left in the past, nobody will speak about integration or inclusion of Roma. Even now, in, 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 if you go to Eastern Europe, you will see in the political programs of the political parties, they now avoid including any word about integration or inclusion of Roma. Because they know that their voters get angry. And they don't want to lose voters. So, what will happen in my opinion? If we remain in the same passive, passive uh, position. Because we as a society, as people, we are extremely passive. We don't come up with solutions, with proposals, with ideas about our own future, how, how we imagine our future in Europe. There is no such debate. And I hope that this, this Congress w could be the beginning of such public debate among Roma uh, across Europe and uh, also in America and in the other parts of, of the world. And no, why not in India? Because we have here also representatives of the, uh, of the nomadic so-called uh, communities in India. The question, if we don't think about ourselves, if we don't think, what will happen in 20, 30 years? I will tell you. It will be the far-right politicians and governments in all these countries who will decide to remove Roma, to deport Roma somewhere, even to create some kind of artificial state for Roma where they can deport Roma, maybe. Because this is something that they, could, they didn't uh, uh, do until now. They did everything, everything else. Assimilation, uh, taking the children from the families, uh, ex extermination, sending us to concentration camps, everything else was implemented. The only thing they didn't do is to create an artificial country or I don't know, something like a g g mega ghetto, let's say, where to send uh, the Roma and to provide with them with some um, basic means, basic, basic uh, uh, money, like elementary conditions to survive there and to work and to produce something like in labor camps something. And this is a possible f uh, scenario for the future of Roma. So if Roma intelligentsia want to do something about this, I think that we are the people who should, in advance, preventative, think preventatively, make prevention, we think about our own future and what we do and in, in such case. We shouldn't, and I want to uh, repeat this and to tell this to all of you. We must not wait for the national governments, for the donors, for the international organizations to offer, to propose solution of our problems or to 
send us somewhere or to, to do something for us. I will give you two examples. United Kingdom made contract with Rwanda to send illegal immigrants to Rwanda, which is in Africa. So why not tomorrow they make contract with some country in Africa or in Asia to send them to deport Roma? Think about United Nations during the war in Kosovo and Yugoslavia, what they did. They created camps for Roma on uh, poisoned land in Kosovska Mitrovica, uh, uh, where it was former uh, lead mines. Lead mines, yeah? What was the solution of the United Nations? Not, they were not far right. This was the United Nations. They sent Roma on such a dangerous places. So we should not wait for, this is my, my recommendation, we should not wait for any solutions coming from governments or international organizations or so on, but we should prepare ourselves in order to not end up in the same situation like Yugoslav Roma end up during the civil war there or Ukrainian Roma. This is the worst possible scenario where bombs coming, starting falling on your head and then you think, oh, I'm, where I'm going now, what I'm doing now. No, you are fucked up. If you are not prepared for this moment, you mean that you lost your time? You lost your house, you lost your relatives, you lost everything, and you go somewhere else on another continent, on another, where you go next. So, let's think about the, our future, our own future. And the last thing I want to tell you, don't focus so much on what non-Roma want from us, or what non-Roma think about us, but focus on ourselves, on ourselves, what we want. And it also related to the question of self-respect. Because in some aspects, Roma people are more advanced in their thinking, in their values, than the non-Roma people in Europe today. Because the moral crisis among non-Roma non people is much deeper than the moral crisis among Roma people. And this is how I want to finish. Focus on or, or yourself and think about Roma society as a closed society because we have been for too long open society. So open that everyone can enter, come, do whatever want with us and go. We need to replace this concept of open society with the concept of closed society. Because when you are attacked, you don't open yourself, you close yourself. You defend yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Orhan Tahir.